Hi, this is Becky Dvorak, the author of Dare to Believe, The True Power of Faith to Walk in Divine Healing and Miracles. I would first like to take this opportunity and welcome you back to the Dare to Believe Bible study. I believe that you were blessed tremendously by the last message as you discovered that you were that you have been created in the mere image of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that you've been given all authority over Satan and all of his wicked works, including sickness and disease. Today we are going to continue on in our study from chapter 1, Redeemed from the Curse, and we're going to start on page 49. We are going to look at the seven places that Jesus shed his blood for us to redeem us from the curse. Number seven in the Bible is a very significant number. It's a number that represents that something is complete. It's perfect. And in regards to the plan of redemption, uh, the plan of redemption is a perfect plan. It is a complete plan. Nothing was left undone. We're going to start by examining the first place where Jesus shed his blood for us. And so we're going to go back into the Garden of Gethsemane. And you can find this in Luke chapter 22, verses 41 through 44. And we will find Jesus as he's kneeling down in the garden, praying to the Father. Jesus was in great anguish. He knew full well that this was his hour. He knew that he would suffer greatly for our benefit. He knew that he would take upon all sin, all sickness, all disease. He knew what he was about to endure, but yet he willingly endured it for us because he loved us. And it was the Father's plan to redeem us back to himself. As we see Jesus kneeling down in the Garden of Gethsemane, fully aware of what was about to take place, we, we hear Jesus crying out to the Father and saying, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass by me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was suffering at this moment tremendously. He knew he was going to endure something horrific for us. And we have to remember when Jesus was going through this, Jesus was not a swindler. He was not cheating. He was not calling down on his God powers to endure this for us. That would have been cheating. No, when Jesus was suffering for us. He was enduring all of this pain as a human being. He did not cheat. He's not a swindler. But Jesus, knowing full well what he was about to endure, he was suffering in spirit, soul, and body. And the anguish was tremendous. And, and it was so horrific. The battle that he was fighting for us was so horrific that he actually started to sweat great drops of blood. Now, medically speaking, this could have killed him, but he knew that it was not his time to give up his spirit. He knew that if he gave up his spirit, which he could have, but had he given up his spirit at this moment, he knew that it would not have been a complete plan of redemption. It would not have redeemed us from all. And so he willingly endured what he was about to suffer for us. And as he sweat great drops of blood, he overcame for us the human will 